So even before I got here this morning, you know, I've been, I've been hanging out with the Lord um, pretty extensively here over the course of the last 40 years of my life. Um, and so this week I'm going to, or this morning I want to share with you guys pretty much, I'm going to let you in on a personal conversation with me and the Father. Um, this is a revelation that he's in the process of revealing to me. And so it's very real to me. Um, it may not be as real for you because it's going to be second person. You know, what the Father reveals to you when you try to explain to me, I might not get in the magnitude that you get it. And so I don't expect that to be any different. What the Father's revealing to me, I'm going to try to share with y'all. And I hope... Um, Father, I just need your help to do this. Um, I've been here before, and <clears throat> and I got it wrong. I got it way wrong. Um, mainly because he asked me to not share it yet, and I wanted to share it anyway. This time he's asked me to share it, and I told him I don't want to share it. Um, just like our Father. So this morning... Um, as I was running out the door, I don't have a title, I don't got a title for this, um, but as I was running out, the, I had it all put together, and I felt like the Spirit said to me, go to, Deuter, go to Deuteronomy 29, and, um, and I'm going to read to you guys out of Deuteronomy 29, verses 2 through 4. We're going to spend a majority of our time everywhere. Uh, there's not enough time to go through all the scriptures that He's given me. I can tell you that right now, but I can tell you that in this conversation that he's been having with me, I'm going to spend a majority of our time in Luke chapter 12 and Daniel chapter 7. And then at the very end, we'll probably spend a little bit of time in, in Matthew, Matthew 24 and 25. So as I was running out the door, I feel like the Lord said, write this down and read this before you get started. So... Deuteronomy 29, 2 through 4, it says uh, in the New Living Translation, Moses summoned all the Israelites and said to them, You have seen with your own eyes everything that the Lord did in Egypt to Pharaoh and to all his servants and his whole country. All the great tests of strength, the miraculous signs, and the amazing wonders. But to this day, the Lord has not given you minds to understand, nor eyes that see, nor ears that that here. I really want you guys to pay attention where it says on number four, but to this day. Or in the King James, it says, yet the Lord had not given you a heart to perceive or eyes to see or ears to hear unto this day. It was only up until this day that he decided to open our eyes and open our hearts. Okay? Um, up until this day, we did not have eyes to see or ears to hear. This day, right now, today. <clears throat> um, so, about two weeks ago, the Lord started to ask me some questions. And this was the question that he asked me. When or what day is Easter? Easter. When or what day is Easter? I want to ask you guys that. Nobody has to answer. When or what day is Easter? Everybody's probably already thinking when that is. And then he asked me another question. When or what day is first fruits? And I was like, hmm, I know when Easter is. I'm not really sure when first fruits is. And he asked me another question. He says, what day is Labor Day? And I was like, well, that's, well, that's in a couple of days. And then he asked me, what day is the Feast of Trumpets? I said, well, I really don't know. And he said, go look them up. And I went and looked them up. This year, Easter was on April 4th of 2021. This year, the Festival of Fruits, First Fruits was on April 4th of 2021.
I looked up Labor Day. It was just a few days ago. September 6th, 2021. The Feast of Trumpets was on September 7th of 2021. So uh, this is the beginning of a conversation that the Father is having with me even now. And it's, it's so exciting, and it is shaking me to the core. Again, again. This has been a wild two years of things that I thought I knew to be truths. Maybe I should question. Um, so if you can turn with me to Luke chapter 12, that would be awesome. If you can't, that's cool. I'll read some of this stuff to you. Luke chapter 12, verse 48. When the Lord shares these kind of things with me, it's, uh, it's so humbling and so scary. Luke chapter 12, verse 48, it says, But the people who are not aware that they are doing wrong will be punished only lightly. Much is required for those to whom much is given, and much more is required from those whom much more is given. And of course, I immediately start asking, you know, when, when, when you get a scripture like that, I want to go, okay, what am I not aware of? <laughs> what am I not aware of? I feel like the Spirit is beginning to tell me that I'm not aware of something, and I'm only not, I'm not going to be punished that bad because I didn't know that it was wrong. And I'm like, well, to be honest with you, I don't want to be punished at all. So why don't we get this just out there in the open why don't you share with me what I'm not doing or what I'm doing wrong? That way I get the opportunity to change the way that I'm doing things. That way I don't receive any punishment for it because I don't like to be punished. So uh, after I read that and I sat there and I started asking the Lord some questions, another verse popped into my head. You guys are probably familiar with it. It's, it's Jeremiah 33.3. Says, uh, ask me and I will tell you some remarkable secrets about what is going to happen here. And so the Lord begins this conversation with me and he starts asking me questions. What are some dates and what are some times? And then, uh, you know, some of it I have the answer for and some of it I don't. And then he tells me that, uh, you know, that, that people that aren't aware of the things that they're doing won't be punished as harshly. And I'm like, dang, okay, well, well what's going on here, Lord? I mean, what's going on here <laughs> maybe wasn't the right way than when I took his word and I brought it back to him. You know what I'm saying? I, our Father really loves it when you take his words and you bring them back to them and present them to him and ask him to expound on them. And... uh so I asked him, you know, Lord, will you tell me some remarkable secrets and things that you want to happen here? That's out of the New Living Translation. If you want to look it up yourself, you're, you're more than welcome to. So I asked him a question, and uh, all this is going on as I'm hanging out in Luke. And he said, now go backwards. And so I went backwards to still in Luke 12, verses, uh, fit, verses 54 and 56. I'm sorry, that wasn't backwards, that was forwards. And it says, uh, Then Jesus turned to the crowd and said, When you see the clouds beginning to form in the west, you say, Here comes a shower. And you are right. And when the south wind blows, you say, Today will be a scorcher. And it is. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but you can't interpret these present times. And so I feel like this isn't just a conversation with my father. I feel like this is a little more serious. And <laughs> I'm like, huh. Well, I kept going just a little bit further. 57 through 59, it says, Why can't you decide for yourselves what is right? 
If you are on your way to court and you meet your accuser, try to settle the matter before it reaches the judge. Or you may be sentenced and handed over to an officer and thrown in jail. And if that happens, you won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. And when I read that, he highlighted two words to me, court and judge. Court and judge. He highlighted those words to me. But I didn't know what to do with them, so I just kind of, okay, sweet, those words were highlighted. What, what's, what's going on here, Lord? What, what do you, what's this accusation? I'm starting to put together in my head, you know what I'm saying? That uh, he's asking me questions. When is Easter and when is first fruits? He's asking me when is Labor Day, when is the Feast of Trumpets? Then he tells me I'm only going to be punished lightly because there are things that I really don't know nothing about. And then he drops me down here a little bit further, and he calls me a hypocrite. <laughs> Because I work in construction, and let me tell you what, when that wind's rolling out of the south, I know what's coming. It's going to be hot. And before I even pull out, when I pull out every morning when I drive by Steve and Pam's house, I look at the sky, and I'm trying to see if it's red, because there's this little rhyme, something about, um, if it's red in the morning, sailors take warning. You know what I mean? And so I'm always looking out there like, what's day going to be like? And, and, then, and then as soon as I turn onto the outer road, I look west, and I'm looking for the clouds in the sky because I know what the day is going to be like when I pull out of my driveway just by paying attention to the weather. You know what I'm saying? And the Lord says, you hypocrite. You know how to read the signs of the earth, but you don't know my times. And I'm like, excuse me? Well, that's pretty insulting. <laughs> Not really, I didn't say that, because I'm, I'm telling you, this, this was a little bit somber for me. And, uh, and so I again begin to inquire. It's probably one of the greatest things you can do. I just want to give you guys a little key right now. If the Lord begins a conversation with you, continue the conversation with Him. Don't listen to His one or two statements and then just be stuck. You have to have the confidence and the boldness to know that the Father is wanting a relationship with you. He is wanting you know, the, the, the songs that we just sing, you know, that there's no mountain that he won't climb up. There's, you know, he, he will chase us down. He wants to show us his heart. He wants to show us who he is. He wants to reveal to us his plans and his purposes if we're listening, if we're paying attention. So uh, <clears throat> I again said, Father, show me what, what are you showing me? What are you saying here? What, what, what do you want to reveal to me? Open my eyes so that I can see what it is that you're wanting to share with me. Okay? And he said, we'll go back on over to Daniel. And I'm like, okay. Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7, <clears throat> verses 25 and 26. Daniel chapter 7, verses 25 and 26, it says, He will defy the Most High and wear down the holy people of the Most High. He will try to change sacred festivals and laws, and they will be placed under His control for a time, times, and a half of time. And I'm like, okay, Father, what's, what's going on here? And you know, of, of course, when He's talking to me, Scripture-specific, I'm reading chapters before, chapters after. I'm rolling up and down the whole entire thing inside out trying to figure out what are you saying to me? What are you saying to me? And I'm learning so much that I can't even convey the things that I'm learning. Um, who, you know, who, what? What do you mean? Somebody's trying to change your seasons. And he started asking me the same question again. The same questions. When is Easter? And I, by now I know. Well, it was April 4th. And he's like, okay. When's first fruits? And I'm like, it's April, April 4th. And he says, what do you pay attention to? And I'm like, well, Easter. And he goes, did I ask you to pay attention to that? And I'm like, no. Well, I don't know. <laughs> you know, have you, ever, have you ever read Job, the end of Job, and when the Lord starts questioning Job, he's like, um, I mean, you know, what? I don't. <laughs> it, it's it's kind of shocking. So, uh, he's like, you, 
You just paid attention to Labor Day, didn't you? Did you pay attention to the Feast of Trumpets? And I'm like, um, well, I don't know. And, uh, <laughs> and again, I start having this question of court. What do you mean court? Court. I got this wrote down all over court and judge and court and judge. Okay. He had me go a little bit further back into Daniel. Daniel chapter 7 verses 9 and 10. He said, uh, this is Daniel here. Daniel's having a vision. He's conveying his vision. It says, he watched as the thrones were put in place and the ancient ones sat down to judge. His clothing was as white as snow and his hair was like the whitest wool. He sat on a fiery throne with wheels blazing a fire and a river of fire flowed from his presence and millions and millions of angels ministered unto him and a hundred million stood to attend him. Then the court began its session and the books were opened. And so the father's having a conversation with me and I'm besides myself. I have so many questions. First of all, what court are we talking about? Second of all, what books are opened? And third, why do I keep seeing judge, 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 judge? Okay. <laughs> and I have these reoccurring echoings in my head over court and judge and over set times. And as I'm thinking and I'm pondering and I'm trying to figure out things, the Holy Spirit starts to go back to the things that I'm learning that are a little tricky. <laughs> and he says, my set times are in Leviticus 23. And I go, okay. So, of course, I flip over to Leviticus 23. which sent me into a spin. Leviticus 23, verse 1 and 2. Out of the New Living Translation, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Give the Israelites instructions regarding the Lord's appointed festivals, the days when all of you will be summoned to worship me. And I'm like, well, that ain't doing it for me. Let's roll some through some more translations. And then I pick it up in the King James. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. And this battle begins in my head immediately. Immediately. The Spirit is talking to me, and my mind is immediately going to war. Here's what my mind said. Well, the Lord said to Moses, give to the Israelites. I'm not an Israelite. That's what my mind did. And I read it in another version. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, speak to the children of Israel. Like, well, I'm not a children of Israel. And then the Holy Spirit immediately says, are you grafted in? And I said, excuse me? He said, are you grafted in? And I said, I'm pretty sure in Romans it says if, if I receive you know, Christ as my Savior, that I'm grafted into the vine. And he said, then what are you doing? And I said, right now I'm trying to figure out what you're saying. He said, these are my feasts. And I said, my whole life, well, these are the feasts and the festivals of the Jews. I don't have to mess with none of that. And he said, no, they're not. These are my feasts. These are mine. These are appointed times that I say, 
what goes and what doesn't. In fact, he says, this is a time where you will have a holy convocation. This right here is a convocation. It's a gathering of your friends and your brothers and your sisters, and you get together and you share. And I begin having all of these, I'm telling you, when the Father speaks, it's not as plain as I'm breaking it down right now. It's like when he speaks, there's a million things that happen in a millisecond. Like, <laughs> and, and I go into war within myself with all of the scriptures that I know, all of the scriptures that I've been trained to believe, all of the passages that I've heard other people teach on. Let me tell you, there's no greater attorney than Christ. There's no greater attorney than Him. And so at this point, I don't recognize who I'm arguing with. And He's laying it out to me. And I'm like, well, I don't have to do any of that stuff. You know, you already did all that stuff, Lord. You did it, so why? I don't have to do any of that. What's this all about? And He says, have I? And I said, well, yeah, you have. And he said, you better look again. Okay. And so I look again. These are my notes on the feast. These are not extensive. They are definitely not exhausted. And I'm going to share some things with you that the Lord's been sharing with me. First of all, Christ came and he fulfilled the spring feast. Okay, before we get there, he's got me messed up. So this is page one and four, and this is like page two and three. So anywho, <clears throat> the seven festivals of our Father, they foreshadow the Father's prophetic program for Israel and the nations. And the nations is very important, very important. These festivals occur in the spring and in the fall at the time of Israel's harvest season. I used to think that they were all spread out over this big period of time like it was something special, and it really isn't. There's a couple weeks in the spring and there's a couple weeks in the fall. Okay? What we have is we have the spring festivals. You can find all of these in the whole chapter of Leviticus 23. The spring festivals are Passover. We're pretty familiar with Passover, aren't we? You know, Christ, our Passover lamb. Unleavened bread. Hmm, kind of, sort of. Some of us are familiar with it. Some of us aren't. Um, first fruits. You know, we're pretty familiar with that. We understand what the first fruits are. Some of us do. Some of us don't. Pentecost. We all get excited about Pentecost. That's a special, special time. We're pretty happy with Pentecost. They foreshadowed our Messiah's first coming. The, the Lord laid these things out, and they had specific things that they did in those times. Basically, these are all times of remembrance. The Passover is remembering that it was the Lord their God who brought them out of bondage. It's a time of remembrance. Christ fulfilled all of these. Christ was the Passover lamb. Christ was the unleavened bread. There was no sin in him. There was no sin in him. Leaven represents sin. Okay? First fruits. He was the first to be raised from the dead. You guys know this stuff, right? Pentecost. You know, we find it, we, we, we hang out in Acts chapter 2 on Pentecost. Um, because that's when Christ, you know, released the Holy Spirit to be upon. 120 in the upper room. I didn't know that the first Pentecost was at Mount Sinai when he gave his spirit to the Israelites. Or he gave them what we call the law. But if you really get down to the nitty gritties and go to John chapter 1, it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was God. And if you drop down to verse 14, it says the Word was wrapped in flesh. Jesus was the law personified. He was. That's what he was. Um, this is going to get you sideways, but it's okay. I promise you it's okay. 
Okay. Not all of the words in this book came from the mouth of God. Some of the words in this book were Holy Spirit inspired, but they did not come from His mouth. Are you tracking with me? That's important because some of these books are revelatory um, commentaries. It would be me sharing with you what the Spirit is revealing to me. Kind of what's going on right here, right now with this. This is what the Spirit has revealed to me. But that isn't the word that came out of God's mouth. Are you tracking with me? There's only two people in the whole Bible where God's words came through them. Moses and Jesus. That's very important. Um, you know, when Jesus was telling them, this is my body, eat it. This is my blood, drink it. And many people walked away from him. You guys know what I'm talking about? That happened because that went against what they thought they knew. This book is a book of prophecy. Prophecy is foretelling of the future. The Father hides prophecy until after it has occurred. After it has occurred, then it's called hindsight, and he reveals to us what really happened. We had no idea that when he was saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, that he was the word of God wrapped in flesh. We had no idea that when it says, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father, he was talking about what he is. These are things that were only revealed after the coming death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, or Jesus Christ. I'm like, Lord, you did all this stuff about the festivals. And he's like, yeah, okay, okay. Have I done the fall festivals? And I'm like, well, you did the spring ones. You had to do the fall ones. He said, you better look again. The fall festivals is the Feast of Trumpets. In the Hebrew, it's called Yom Teruah. In the Hebrew tradition, it's called Rosh Hashanah. After that, you have the Day of Atonement, otherwise known as Yom Kippur. After that, you have what's called the Feast of Tabernacles, or called Sukkot. These foreshadow our Messiah's second coming. And so if he fulfilled the first set, I'm going to be a gambling man here and bet that he's going to fulfill the second set. And I can look at the first set and see the things that he did. You know, back in that time, in the first century church, in order for an animal to be sacrificed, it had to be examined by the priests for seven days to determine whether or not it was spot-free and blemish-free before it could be sacrificed to Adonai, to Jehovah, our Elohim. Christ was in Jerusalem for seven days being inspected by the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they found no fault in him. We can see it. We can see him live out these things. They inspected him. They found him to not have any, any hog, hamatzah, any leaven in him at all. And so they decided he can be sacrificed. And when he was raised from the dead, that was the first fruit. We can see all of this stuff. We're all about, I like, I, dude, I love the Pente, I love Pentecost. I love it. You know, Penta means 50, you know. <laughs> but I can't see Christ in the fall festivals yet. And then the Lord started to open my eyes. The first three festivals are the story of redemption. It's the story of redemption. The fourth, which is Pentecost, that's when we were redeemed. Now we are redeemed, okay? The last five, six, and seven, three are restoring the Father's presence 
and it's the kingdom in its fullness. And I'm so excited and so scared. We right now are in the middle of what's called the Ten High Holy Days. We are in the middle of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, and the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is, in, is on the 16th. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, was on September 6th. Now, I'm going to do my best to share some things with you, and I'm going to ask for some grace, because I'm still learning a bunch of it. Um, I've learned a bunch of it to be amazing, I've learned a bunch of it to be scary, and I've learned to ask the Father to please confirm a lot of this stuff to me. Um, and He will. He'll let me know what's right and what's wrong. So, <clears throat> man, Father, help me. This Daniel, this Daniel chapter 7, where the we're the accuser, actually. There's a big difference between Satan, um, between the accuser, between the Nahesh. These are all different things that we lump together as one Satan. But they're actually different. They're different spiritual beings. They're actually small Elohims, they're, <laughs> which, which blows so much stuff away, you know. Um, you, you can check, if, if you're interested in really digging into it, look up Psalm, look up, uh, Psalm 82. <laughs> Psalm 82, and the council. God is in the council of other gods. Like, he needs their council. No, it's just the way he works. He chooses to work through other things, other individuals. He chooses to work with us and through us. He doesn't have to. But uh, the Lord is bringing back so many things. Ah, I don't even know how many years ago it was. Two or three years ago, James and Melissa showed up, and they started talking about the calendar, and it sparked this interest. You know, there's a bunch of people that kind of wanted to learn about it, and uh, didn't really know what it was, and, and, uh, and I, I, you know, kind of got drawn in and was like, what is this new information that I've never heard of? You know, and, 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 and what we run off of is called a Gregorian calendar. We run, we, we are of the Roman Greco mindset. We tend to veer away from Hebrew thought and, and tend to veer towards Greek thought, okay? Greek thought has to make sense. We have to put A and B together to equal C, the Hebrews aren't necessarily like that. <laughs> They're like way more all over. And it's exciting, but it's scary too, because in my mindset, I need to know where I'm going. And these guys are just rolling with blind faith. And I'm like, okay. So, you can begin to break these things down. There's a couple of different calendars in the, in the Bible. The first calendar rolls from Genesis 1 to Exodus 12. Um, at the end, that's called the civil calendar. And then for some reason, at Exodus 12, the Lord decides to change the calendar. You go to Exodus 12, it says, from this day forward, this is now called the first day. And so you have these, these different months. I'll just read them off to you real quick. You have what's called Tishrei, you have Sheshvan, Kislev, Tevet, Devat, Adar, Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Alul, and Tishrei. Oh, Tishrei is the end and the beginning. So those are the months of the Father. And so when you're reading in your Bible and it says on the sumpteenth day of the something month, he's telling you when things are happening. I have no idea when those things are happening because I go off of January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, you know what I'm saying? Um, the Lord started showing me some really cool stuff. Again, I'm so thrilled, first of all, that He's showing me. Second, I'm so scared. I'm telling you, our Father is to be revered. You don't have to if you don't want to, but you're gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, these are my notes that I took out of Leviticus 23, out of multiple versions of Bibles, out of, out, of, uh, out, of, out of Greek translations, out of Hebrew translations, out of American translations, and I'm just going to do my best to condense it 
I'm going to rattle off a bunch of scripture. Um, if you want to take notes, feel free. I just, we don't have the time to go through every single scripture, but these are scriptures that are going to back up or make these festivals and feasts relevant. <clears throat> so, on the first month, on the 14th day of the first month, it says, that's when the Passover will happen. The Passover festival points to the Messiah as the Lamb of God. Without spot or blemish, he was the Passover Lamb sacrificed for the sin of mankind. It starts with that. Genesis 3.15, this is the passage that says God is going to put enmity between man and the Nahesh at that particular point in the Bible. <clears throat> and he will use the heel of his foot to, stunk, to crush his head. That's in Genesis 3.15. Then you can also see it in uh, Genesis 22, verses 6 through 9. It's uh, John, hold on, let me slow down. Genesis 3.15, Genesis 22, verses 6 through 9. Then John 1.29 is where it specifically says this was the Passover lamb. And you've got 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Okay. Now, the day after the 14th day, I'm referencing Leviticus 23 again. This is going to be from the 15th to the 21st, which is going to be Nisan 15 to 21, is what's called unleavened bread. Or, as the Hebrew people would say, hag hamatzah. Leaven represents sin, and it is to be put away. Our Messiah was without sin, therefore... He could offer his body to be broken and his blood to be shed for the forgiveness of sin. When our sins were laid upon him, he was buried and put into the grave. You can find that in Genesis 22, 14. You can find this in Isaiah 52, 13 through 53, 12. You can find this in 1 Corinthians 5, verses 6 through 8. You can find it in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. You can find it in 1 Peter 2, verse 24. Do I need to go over those again? Because I feel like I'm moving fast. Then you have what's called first fruits, and this is the day after the Sabbath, after Passover. It's kind of hard to follow. First of all, we've got to know that the Sabbath is Saturday, not Sunday, or you're, not, you're going to lose track of God's calendar, not my calendar, God's calendar. It's important to differentiate the two. He says the day after the Sabbath, after Passover, is what's first fruits. You know, we have the death, burial, and resurrection. He was in the grave for three days, and on the third day he rose. That blows Good Friday out of the window on the timeline. Because if he died on Friday and he was in the grave for three days and three nights, he can't raise on Sunday. Some of the things we've been taught, we need to really go back and learn our Bibles. The first fruits festival occurred on the morrow after the Sabbath, after the Passover. This means it's Sunday, because it's after the Sabbath, which is Sunday. He's very clear on these things. The Messiah was raised early Sunday morning on the third day after his burial to become the first fruit of the dead. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He made these mentions in John chapter 11, verse 25. In 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4. Also, 1 Corinthians 15, 20 and 15, 23. He made these statements in Colossians 1, 15 and verse 18. Then you have what's called Pentecost. Pentecost is seven weeks after the Passover, which would be 49 days. You can track all these dates and all these times, okay? 40 days, after the Messi 40 days after the Messiah's resurrection, on the day of his ascension, Jesus told his disciples to wait for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ten days later, on Pentecost, there came a mighty rushing wind with signs and wonders. Even as Israel experienced, even, I mean, what happened at Shavuot was the same thing that happened at Mount Sinai. 
He spoke to 70 nations in 70 different tongues. There were 3,000 lost at Mount Sinai when they worshiped the golden calf. When the Holy Spirit came in Acts chapter 2, they spoke in unknown languages that men could understand. There were 70 languages that were spoken in the book of Acts. At Peter's first preaching, there was 3,000 saved. The Lord redeemed the 3,000 lost on Mount Sinai. This stuff is scary to me. <laughs> it shouldn't be, but it is. Now through the Messiah, nations are grafted into the rich olive tree of Israel. The church age was birthed at Pentecost. That's in Exodus chapter 19. That's in Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. That's in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. And then Romans chapter 11, verses 17 through 24. Those are easy. Those are easy. Because my Messiah already did that. And I can track it. And there's a timeline. And there's verses and scriptures. And you know what I'm saying? All these different breakdowns to help me to understand. Now this part gets tricky. And I'm going to share with you guys what I believe the Father has shared with me. Take it to the Lord and ask Him. Okay? Don't take my word for it. Take it to the Word, take it to the Father, and ask Him, is this true? I'm just going to go through these three real quick, and then I'm going to try to come back and revisit them. You have what's called the Feast of Trumpets, or Yom HaTeruah, or Rosh Hashanah. That one's really tricky. I've been studying this one inside out and upside down, and I'm about as lost as a puppy trying to find its mom. I got a lot of stuff that I'm solid on, but I just can't wrap my head around two different things, meaning different things, and like I'm learning that Rosh Hashanah is actually based off of the civil calendar, which is the calendar from Genesis 1 all the way to Exodus. They actually say that Rosh Hashanah is Adam's birthday, and it's the creation of mankind. I'm like, oh, what? What, what, what is this that I'm learning? <clears throat> um... Yom Teruah, or the Feast of Trumpets, is actually the awakening blast. You know, so they're two different things, but they're on the same day at the same time. And so what, what's going on here is this is uh, at the Lord's appointed time on a future, Rosh Hashanah, or what is dubbed the Day of Judgment. And this has immediately sparked my entrance because, or interest because of judge and, and courts that the Lord had this conversation with me on over here. So this is an ongoing thing, and I, I by no means have this all wrapped up and figured out yet because the Lord is still teaching it to me. <clears throat> it says, uh, At the Lord's appointed time on a future, Rosh Hashanah, or the Day of Judgment, or the Awakening Blast, which is the last or the small shofar. I brought some shofars. Let me, let me see those real quick, Susie. I'm sure that you guys, I thought I knew what a shofar was. And I'm like, oh yeah, no problem. I know what a shofar is. Well, there's three different shofars in here, not just one. And um, this is the one that I'm familiar with. This is what most of us are familiar with, okay? <clears throat> but I don't know what this one is for at all. I'm still learning it. I can't blow this one at all. And this one right here, this one, is the one that gets blowed at the awakening blast. This one is the one that you're going to hear when the dead will rise to meet Christ in the sky. Pretty wild, huh? Pretty wild. So the Lord has been showing me that he has different blasts for different times. And if you read in the book of Revelation, the angels are going to be blowing the trumpets. They make different sounds. I can't blow this one. My lips ain't small enough. <laughs> Try, <laughs> Nathan. I don't even know what this one's for yet. I'm still trying, I'm still learning a bunch of stuff, I promise. But this one, this is the one that we're going to hear when Christ comes back to set his foot on the Mount of Olives. And they're different things because at the awakening blast, 
that is telling everybody he's coming, but that's when the dead in Christ meet him in the sky. That's not when he puts his foot on the earth. That's when they meet him in the sky. That's the beginning of Yom Teruah. That's the Feast of Trumpets. And then ten days later, ten days later, you hear the big blast. That's when he comes and puts his foot on the Mount of Olives. And I'm starting to see these weird connections. Wait a minute. Christ, you told him to wait for ten days before you sent the Holy Spirit? And now we have the, the Feast of Trumpets, but then 10 days later, you have the Day of Atonement. He's starting to show me these connections, just like in the spring, it's going to be real similar in the fall. So, uh, <clears throat> the Feast of Trumpets, at the Lord's appointed time on a future Rosh Hashanah, or day of judgment, that's the awakening blast. It's, it's, it's referred to in the Bible as the last shofar, which had me confused because the last shofar is a little one, but then you have what's called the great shofar. That's the big one. All these little deals, all these wordings trip me up. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, if it's the last, it's the last. That's got to be the last shofar. You know, the trumpet went out it. Nope, not exactly. And I'm like, huh, curveball. So the last or the small shofar will announce the day of the Lord. It will announce the messianic kingdom. It will announce the resurrection of the righteous dead. It will announce the departure of the righteous living. First the resurrected dead go, and then the righteous living go. And we think that we're in heaven. That's not true. Ten days later, we come back. I'm like, excuse me? I thought it was just over. And so again... The Lord is wrecking my theology. I cannot stop constantly thinking, I don't even know what the name of the song is that we've been playing for a couple weeks. It says, Lord, uh, wreck my religion. Uh, tear down the walls of my religion. I don't, I don't even know what the other one is. But, I mean, he's, he's doing something in me that has me a little scared. Like, what have I been doing? What have I been doing? My whole, what have I been doing for the last 20 years? So, uh... And it's also going to be the Feast of Trumpets is, is recognizing the Messiah's enthronement. You know, because when he died, when, when, when Jesus died, there was a sign above his head that said, King of the Jews. But he never really got to partake in his kingdom. You know what I'm saying? So when he comes back, he is going to be king of the world. For a thousand years is what the Bible says. His rule and reign on earth for a thousand years. And what's going on right now is he's getting his people ready because the king has to have a people that's ready. You can find these passages in Numbers 29 verse 1, Psalm 81 verse 3, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 through 53, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17, Daniel chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and Acts 17, verses 30 and 31. Ten days later, what's, what's fun, I didn't write these ones down, I should have wrote it down, but over here where it talks about um, the festival of trumpets, it's in the seventh month on the first day, put that in your pocket. The seventh month on the first day. That's important. The Lord has shared something with me. I'm trying to get it across to you guys. It has blown me away. I'm like blown away by it. So, ten days later after the Feast of Trumpets is the Day of Atonement, or what's called Yom Kippur. And on Yom Kippur, in the seventh year of tribulation, the great shofar, that's the big one that I just showed you, the great shofar will sound, and that will announce the Messiah's second coming. It's when his feet will touch the Mount of Olives. It's the regathering of the exiles. It's the regathering of the ten lost tribes or the house of Ephraim, the northern house, back to the southern house, the southern house being Judah and Benjamin. It's to announce the judgment of the nations. That's the binding of Satan for a thousand years. These are two different things ten days apart. Kind of like Jesus died and 
You know what I'm saying? And he was re- desperately resurrected, and he showed up to the disciples and said, hey, in 10 days, I'm going to send, or he didn't tell them exactly 10 days. He said, hang out and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. But it was 10 days later. And so I'm starting to make these connections between uh, the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement. Um, you can find these passages in Isaiah 27, verses 12 through 13. You can find it in Zechariah 14, verses 1 through 9. You can find it in Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. You can find it from from 24, 30 and 31, all the way through 25, 31 through 46, and then also in Revelations chapter 20, verses 1 through 3. I know, everybody's just looking at me like a deer in the headlights. Maybe I should make copies of all this, because I'm telling you, there are some a lot of scriptures here. Uh, It'll be chicken scratch. It looks like a two-year-old wrote it, but I'll see if my Miss Becky can make about... I don't know, 50 copies, and whoever wants them can have them. Then what's after that, what's after the Day of Atonement, is called the Feast of Tabernacles. The Feast of Tabernacles, or as the Hebrews call it, Sukkot. Sukkot is known as a season of joy. It recalls the time when Israel dwelt in the wilderness and the Lord tabernacled with them. It also represents the time of the Messianic kingdom when the Messiah has brought full redemption to mankind and the earth. He will reign as king of Israel from Jerusalem, restoring peace, justice, righteousness. A time when the entire earth will be filled with the knowledge of his glory. So there is a timeline when things are going to happen. And as much as, I, as, much as it is bad right now, you better buckle up. I'm telling you right now. You better buckle up. Israel has always been a pattern of what the Father is allowing to happen or not happen throughout the world. They have vax passports in Israel. You cannot move unless you prove that you are vaccinated. Look it up. What did our president just announce? If you have a business with more than 100 employees... He wants mandatory vaccinations. 3M, right down here in Nevada, just kicked it out. You'll be vaccinated or fired. We are being conditioned for what's coming. I don't mean to scare you. Just like Michael said, what are we to think about? That which is good and pure and holy. Listen, when Stephen was being stoned, the Holy Spirit was so upon that man It was like it wasn't even happening. The Spirit is going to take care of us. Um, Did I give you the scriptures for Feast of Tabernacles? I didn't. That doesn't, eh. I could have. Okay, yeah, there's been a lot. It's uh, Isaiah 10, verses 10 and 11, the whole chapter of Isaiah 60, the whole chapter of Jeremiah 33, and then Zechariah 14, 9. Um. So we're in right now, we're in right now what's called the 10 days of awe. The 10 days of awe, which is the days in between, uh, it's the days in between the Feast of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement. Those are the 10 days of awe. And um, there's so much more to this. I feel like I'm really butchering it. There is so much more to this. This, This is a time of repentance, actually. This is, this is in correlation when Moses went up and down the mountain. You know, he went up the mountain, he got the Ten Commandments, he came back down. That took him 40 days. And, uh, you know, the, the finger of Elohim wrote on the, on the tablets, and they were worse than the golden calf, and they, they shattered it, or he shattered it. And then, uh, and then he went back. He, as he was going back up the mountain, actually, he broke the tablets, and he was mad, and God was pretty disappointed too. Check it out. Read the book of Exodus. He says God was going to wipe them out. God was going to kill the entire nation. And Moses, the humble man that he was, prayed and said, Father, please do not wipe them out. Don't wipe them out on behalf of your own name. These nations have seen what you have done with these people. And if you wipe them out, it's going to prove that you couldn't do what you said you were going to do. And he said, Moses, you're right. Because you prayed for them, I'm going to forgive them. We... This is no different for us. We can pray to our king and change the outcomes of situations and circumstances with for our nation. 
It doesn't have to happen. God knows all, but it doesn't mean it has to play out. The Feast of Trumpets is a day of judgment. Go back, you can go back into Daniel and, 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 and you can read. Uh, you know, I've been doing a bunch of studies, not just in the Bible, but, but also uh, listening to rabbis because the Lord has really been stretching me over the last two years. And when he started asking me simple questions like salvation is from the Jews, I'm like, okay, cool. Salvation is from the Jews. He said, don't you think you should pay attention to what the Jews got to say about me? And I'm like, well, I never gave it any thought, but I guess I will. I know it sounds silly, but, but, but it isn't. The Lord has been pressing me to look into other things. He, Paul, Paul, says, Paul says, is there any benefit to being a Jew? And he says, absolutely, for the Jews have been entrusted the oracles of God. The Jews have been entrusted the secrets of God. Oh, I'm just going to, where was I here? Where did where we, I, because I wasn't going to, but I'm going to. I need to, these notes are so, such a mess right now. Um, all right, sweet, here it is. Uh, Deuteronomy 29, verse 28, it says, There are secret things that the belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things belong to us and our descendants forever. Listen, we are in a precedented time where God is releasing revelation at a ridiculous pace. And if you have the eyes to see, with objective truth, not subjective truth, Subjective truth is a preconceived idea of what you think that it should be. Objective truth is going, Father, I think I know something, but I'm willing to lay it down if you'll show me what you want me to know. Huh. So I know I'm, I'm way back, I'm way out on time. I, st- I have so much stuff to share and haven't even touched the surface, but I do want to, I do want to, I do want to share this. Um, Man, Matthew 24. Matthew 24. This is an amazing spot in Scripture. <sighs> Matthew 24. It says 29. Let me see here. The, the subtitle to this is Jesus Foretells the Future in Matthew 24. I'm going to pick it up at verse 29. It says, Immediately after those horrible days end, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then at last, the sign of the coming of the Son of Man will appear in the heavens, and there will be deep mourning among all of the nations of the earth. They will see the Son of Man arrive on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. He will send forth his angels with the sound of a mighty trumpet blast. What is a mighty trumpet? It's a feast. Yeah, it's during. He. Keep keep going. (laughs) Calm down, McCullum. He will send forth his angels with the sound of a mighty trumpet blast and they will gather together his chosen ones from the furthest ends of the earth and of heaven. He's telling you when this is going to happen and this is going to get better. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its buds become tender and its leaves begin to sprout, you know without being told that summer is near. Just so, when you see the events that I've described beginning to happen, you can know his return is very near. It is right at the door. I assure you, this generation will not pass from the scene before all of these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will remain forever. Check this out. Here it is. When the Son of Man returned... Oh, no, 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 no. However, no one knows the day and the hour when these things will happen, not even the angels of heaven. Only the Father knows. I want to pause right there. Everything that we just talked about, him blowing a trumpet, we're talking about these feasts, And I just learned this that is astonishingly blowing my mind. If you pay attention to these festivals and these feasts on God's calendar, he tells you when they're happening, okay? The Feast of Trumpets only is the only festival that happens at the head of the month. It's called Rosh. The head of every Hebrew month, all of these months that I read you, you know, Tishrei all the way through Elul, at the head of a month, it's called a Shabbat. That's called a Sabbath. Okay. It's, oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, Rosh Kadesh is the head. Rosh Hashanah is the head. You have what's called a Heva month, 
and then you have what's called the head of the festivals. If you break all these down in their times and their dates, um, they only allow a month to change when you have a witness of two people. And it says back in Genesis that the moon and the stars are set for the seasons. Okay? They only allow it to go from January to February when they see the moon get black and then a little sliver comes out and it gets big. You understand? For 48 hours, no man knows the day and no man knows the hour. Because for 48 hours, the sliver gets black and then the sliver comes back. This is what's called a Hebrew idiom. Jesus is telling you, for those who have eyes to hear and ears to see, he's not telling you the year, but he's telling you the day that he wants to come back. No man knows the day and no man knows the hour is a Hebrew idiom. The preceding passages talking about he's going to come back with the angels at the blowing of the trumpet. He lays all of this stuff out for you. I've been doing some research and the kings were only crowned you could get anointed king whenever you wanted. Like, you know, Samuel anointed Saul, you know, and then King David was anointed with the oil, but he only took his kingship on Tishrei 1. Christ had a sign above his head that said, here is the king of the Jews. He'll be coronated on Tishrei 1, just like all of the other kings of the Old Testament. These are the things that are, yeah, I can see everybody's speech is slight right, right now. Like, are you really telling what, you know, it says right here. If he's, I didn't tell you he's over there. I didn't tell you to go look over there. I didn't tell you to go look over here. I didn't tell you to go chase him down. I didn't tell you what year that it was going to happen. But Jesus himself says, no man, day knows, no man knows the hour. No man knows the day. No man knows the hour. This is the only festival out of all of the seven festivals where no man knows the day and no man knows the hour. Because all the other ones happen in the middle of the month on a, on a full moon. You know what I'm saying? And if the moon cycles are to figure out the months and the seasons, we are in a special time right now of repentance. That is what this 10 days is for. The, these feasts, this whole judge, this whole judge in the courts that I'm talking about, when, when in Daniel it says the, the, the king of glory comes in from the fields and he sits down and he opens the books. What books are he opening? Why, why if, if Christ died for my sins, why are there even, what, what are these books? Well, I've been studying that too. And they, there's a book of life, there's a book of death, and there's a book of the undecided. These are the books that are opened. And, and when we all got saved, when we all asked Christ, you know, to forgive us of our sins, it was great. Right? It was great. It was great. Okay? Well, how much repenting have we done since then? I mean, I can't tell y'all what y'all are doing, but I can tell you at this, these 10 days of all, these days of repentance, these, Father, will you show me within myself things that have made you not happy, things that I need to work on? What are the things that are causing? Because what's going on is at the, the Feast of Trumpets, is, it's when court is opened. Court is in session. And right now, during these 10 days, Hasatan is bringing accusations from the children of the Most High and saying, this is what they've done. 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 Well, for these 10 days, the father is sitting down going, yeah, they've done that. Yeah, they've done that. Yeah, they've done that. But it's the 10 days that he's asking us to repent. And so we say, Father, is there anything in me that you're not happy with? And if we repent of them, what happens? Restoration rides on the back of repentance. If we repent, they're erased out of the books. But on what's called the Day of Atonement, the books are closed. The books are closed. And what happened in the year 2021, the sins that you did not repent of, listen, you're forgiven of your sins, but you're not free from the repercussions. Think about that. Think about it. I mean, I can do, some, I can have, I can do something horrible to my wife, and she can forgive me, but there's broken trust. You get what I'm saying? You're forgiven for your sins, but if you don't ask the Lord to forgive you for them, you might have some... Nobody wants to hear that. I mean, I didn't want to hear that. But these 10 days are days of repentance. And I've been asking the Lord, Father, will you show me? 
Nathan can attest, Rod can attest, I've been in a month of, I've been in 40 days of crap storms because I asked the Lord at the beginning, it's so much more than, than the 10 days. <laughs> the, the shuv or the return is actually 30 days of repentance, of prepping yourself before you run into the 10 high holy days. And the Lord started showing me, I got, I'm allergic to wasps. I got to carry an EpiPen. I've been stung, I got stung three times in five weeks. And every single time I got stung, I was about to tear this dude's head off at work for his negligence. And, and, and the Lord said, don't do that. You're destroying this guy's spirit. And I was about to come unhinged on him again. And the Lord would sting me. Boop. Okay, the Lord wouldn't sting me, but a wasp would sting me. Boop. And I'm like, dang. And I'm like, dang, what's going on? And the next time something happened, something ridiculous happened, and I was coming unhinged on him, the Lord said, quit it. You're tearing this guy apart. You're hurting him in his, in his, who he, his soul, his, his spirit. You're destroying, you're crushing this kid because he, not everybody's built to receive harsh talking to. Um, anywho, <laughs> I'm about to hammer this dude, and I, I walked out. It's 6.30 in the morning. They're not even flying around yet, and I got stung in the ear. And as soon as I got stung, the father said, I told you to listen to me. And it wasn't a couple days later, this dude mismeasured like the first five pieces of gutter on a house, and so I did a bunch of installing two and three times, and I was coming unhinged on him again. Like, dude, you're grounded from the tape measure. And boop, hammered me right in the side. And I, I had to ask for prayer and ask my brothers, what's going on, what's going on, and thank the good Lord. I think it started with Nathan, and then it happened through Rod, and then it helped, happened through Lonnie, and the Lord finally spoke to me, and he said, listen, you represent me fantastic at church. You represent me all the time in a great, fantastic way, but when you put that tool belt on, you're a horrible ambassador of my kingdom. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Father, that's pretty brutal. And he was like, no different than you are to them. And I'm like, okay. Well, I recognize the error of my way. Uh, will you forgive me for being a poor representative of your kingdom? Will you forgive me for being a bad ambassador? Will you forgive me for destroying those that you laid your life down for? Thank you, Father. Father. I've asked him to forgive me. I feel like he has forgiven me. And then the test begins. Because uh, they're still messing some things up. And uh, I had to ask the guy to forgive me. Will you forgive me? Because an injury occurred. And then I had to work with this guy. And I blamed him for the injury. And then every time he made a mistake, those mistakes compiled, which actually went from unforgiveness to a root of bitterness. And the father had to unravel all of this in me. And I'm, I'm, hey, I mean, I ain't nothing for real, but I'm up here teaching you guys. I'm up on, I'm up here teaching you guys something, and I am a mess. That was one, and I'm like, oh, sweet, yeah, cool, I'm glad I got that, you know, erased out of the book, and I'm not going to, okay, that's great. And then uh, the Lord asked me yesterday, he said, I want you to call your dad and ask him to forgive you, and I'm like, no way. Ain't happening, Captain. Uh Bad relationship, you know what I'm saying, just mess. I tried to do some restoring it years ago, and, and all kinds of stuff happened, and, and my dad got sick and asked me to watch a dog, and he never came and picked his dog up. I didn't want no stupid white pit bull, you know what I'm saying, and it left a big old headache, and I haven't talked to him since. It's been two, if not three years. You know, he's like, happy birthday, and I'm like, whatever. <laughs> and the Lord asked me to forgive him for that, and I need to ask him to forgive me for treating him like that. And the Lord started hammering me on honoring your mother and your father. And, 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 it, and it stings, but these are the things that have to happen in order for the day of atonement. You know what I'm saying? Christ died for my sins. But if I don't apply the blood of Yeshua to my life, what good was his blood? I received it when I got salvation, but when's the last time I said, Father, man, is there some things that you're not happy with in me that I need to make some adjustments on? I challenge y'all to ask him that. Ask the Father. Lord, is there something in my life that, I'm, that you're not pleased with that you want me to deal with? You got a couple days. You got a couple days. So, uh, I mean, that, that's it in a nutshell, but I'm telling you, he's a gracious God. These, these, these 10 days, these 10 days I've learned 
uh, some Hebrew words, uh, avenu, um, mekenu. And for these 10 days, uh, the Hebrew people, they don't even approach Yahweh or God as father. These are the 10 days that we crown him as king. You are my king. I submit to you and your authority. And so uh, I'm, I'm way out on time, so I'm just going to close. Like I said, don't take my word for it. Right, there's Matthew chapter 18, you know, about the story of the unforgiving debtor. And, and he's using the analogy of a king. The king is settling his debts. And at the end of the settling of the debts, you have a new year. It's, it's great. And so on, on, uh, on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, people traditionally wear all white because they've been washed by the blood of Yeshua. I didn't know none of this stuff. I'm, I'm still learning so much stuff. But I'm telling you, these, these feasts or these festivals, these days of the Lord, we need to look at. We need to revisit them. Because Christ did walk out the spring, but, but, the, but the fall is yet to come. And these are prophetic insights into the days ahead. Into the days ahead. Uh, so, thanks for listening to me blab. Um, but I, I'm supposed to uh, just take a moment. Everybody, just... Take a moment. I'm, I'm, I'm done teaching. And I just want to just pray. And um, Father, ah, just make this right. I know, I know I get in the way of myself. I get in your way. Father, I ask that you would make these words what you want them to be. Father, I ask that you would give my brothers and sisters the revelation. Lord, just do what only you can do. And Lord, I, I just ask that you would... Ah, Help them to cry out to you and say, Father, is this stuff that he's sharing, is this accurate? And, and Father, also with it being, with us being right in between, you know, uh, the Festival of Trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets, and the Day of Atonement, Father, I ask that you would reveal any areas within our hearts that we need to work on, that you are not satisfied with. Lord, I ask that you would reveal them to us. Father, give us the opportunity to repent. Give us the opportunity to repent. Father, we, we, we thank you for sending Yeshua, Jesus, to die for our sins, that his blood atoned for our sins. Lord, where do we need to apply the blood of Jesus in our lives? Father, I ask that you would just encounter everybody. Father, help us to Revisit your word with new eyes, with childlike faith, not understanding. Lord, please, we cry out. We pray for our nation. We pray for our leadership, Heavenly Father. Please encounter them. Please save their souls. Please magnify your voice. Lord, we repent. We repent for the, for the atrocities, for, for the bloodshed, for, for abortions. Lord, we repent. Lord, we just ask for your help. We ask that you would intervene. Lord, your word says if, if these days aren't shortened, then all of humanity be wiped out. Lord, we're asking that you would shorten these days. That you would get us ready for your kingdom to come. For your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we need you. We need you like we've never need you. We need you more now than, than when we first even got saved. Father, please help us and give us the courage and the boldness to, to repent and to crown you as the king of our lives, the king of our day-to-day -day activities. Have your way, Father. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.